ten thousand subscribers. Ten like this thing is really stupid. Uh, ten thousand subscribers. I am like so happy. You know, when I started doing this series, gosh, I don't know, it must have been like four years or something, like four years ago. I never would have expected it to reach this many people. Uh, I was doing it just for fun, and uh, yeah, you know, I just want to thank everybody out there for for watching these weird videos of mine, and and for you know coming back each week to watch you know what kind of weird fruit I'm going to eat, where I'm gonna go, and uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. I, I'm like so happy about this. You know, when I first started doing this series, I, I you know, I didn't really think of anything of it, but when I started getting actually like, people watching, I was like, you know what? I have a goal now. I want to get 10,000 subscribers. And now I'm here. So now I got to set a new goal. So, um, let's say, uh, 25,000. 25,000 subscribers. And, you know, I'm going to get my party hat on. I'm going to get my noisemaker. And I'm going to get, like, one of those little clickety clackety things that you can kind of, like, uh, I, you can kind of like spin around and makes that noise. If you don't know what I'm talking about, tell all your friends to subscribe so you can find out. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna kick it up for the next one. But you know, I made a video like this uh, when I hit 5,000, and there's gonna be another one when I hit 25. But uh, you know, at 10,000, if if all I ever get is 10,000, I am happy with that. This is kind of like what I uh, set out to get <laughs> once things started like picking up. Uh, and as promised, I'm going to take some questions. Um, so a couple weeks ago, I put out a video seeing like what uh, what you guys want to know, and I'm here to answer it. Uh, I've been asked by several people uh, what I do for work, how I can afford to travel, um, and, and I think those are kind of like they, they go together, like how I make money, you know, to afford doing this sort of thing. Um, you know, first of all, I mean, I do get support on Patreon, and I get like a little bit of YouTube revenue. Like on YouTube, I don't really make like hardly anything, but on Patreon, I, I do get enough money that kind of like helps me fund these trips. Um, and you know, that's that's thanks to people watching who are contributing to my to my channel. If uh, you haven't seen that, go to my Patreon page, there's a link below, uh, where you can find out about supporting me. But I'm not, I'm not going to get into that, there's just not enough time. <laughs> but, uh, so I, I do have that, that does help a lot. Uh, I wouldn't be doing these videos without that, that Patreon support. Um, it's just far too expensive. Uh, the other thing is, uh, what I do for a living is I'm an entertainer. So I, I'm a contortionist and a uh, sideshow performer, which means I do stuff like uh, fire eating, sword swallowing, I get up straight jackets, a really you know weird way to make a living that probably could be a YouTube series on its own, but you know what, I, I you know, that's my life. I do that like every day, so I, I like doing this as kind of uh, more of a, a hobby, something relax and, and make videos is kind of like meditative for me. So just uh, that kind of lifestyle also does give me the opportunity to travel uh, domestically a lot. Every now and then I'll go somewhere internationally, but uh, usually it's, uh, it's bringing me all around the U.S. So I'll get work sometimes, you know, like out in Texas or in California or Oregon or, you know, like I'll, I'll just like hop on a plane and go and I'll do my gig, and then when I get some free time, uh, I'll check out like any farmers markets and stuff like that for for the videos. So uh, that's why you see like every video. I'm like I'm somewhere new. Like you know, I posted one not too long ago where I was in like Syracuse. I was there for a tattoo convention. So I did my tattoo convention, and then afterwards uh, I went to a farmers market and bought some wild grapes and tomatoes, you know, like, it's kind of a bizarre combination, but, um, you know, it gives me the chance to kind of, like, have these two competing worlds that uh, kind of, like, work well together. Uh, what was your reason for uh, starting videos and reviews about fruit? Um, well, this one's kind of, uh, kind of interesting. So I was working in Malaysia, and uh, 
Malaysia is just like, an amazing place for fruit. I mean, like probably like a hundred of my videos are from Malaysia, if not more. And that's uh, that is just somewhere where I happen to be. And I saw all the fruit, and I was like, "Wow, this is you know something to comment on." So like I hadn't made any videos before, and I was planning on just like documenting my trip. Uh, so I. I think I filmed like a vlog, I think I filmed uh, me eating or drinking like coffee in a can, and I like I had like a few videos set up, and uh, I also reviewed a fruit, the uh, 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 tamarillo. And when I like watched it all back, I was like, the tamarillo is interesting, there's something there. And there's a lot of crazy fruit in Malaysia, but the other ones I didn't see really like clicking. So, uh, I made the decision to make a series about fruit. You know, originally it was just me documenting because I'd never been to Malaysia before. Uh, I was doing it for fun, but it turned into this, this series. So after I did the Tamarillo, then uh, I picked up Langsats and snake fruit, and, you know, the rest is, is kind of history. Um, so that's why I started the series, but, you know, fruit hunting has always been an interest for me. Um, ever since I was little, I would, you know, go to the supermarket and, you know, beg my parents to give me, like, whatever kind of weird thing I would find. Uh, and that just, like, continued on as I got older. It's like, uh, I'm vegetarian, so, like, <laughs> you know, fruit hunting I see is kind of like my, uh, it's kind of like a vegetarian safari, you know? It's like trophy hunting. I find something kind of bizarre uh, that I can eat, and it's it's just interesting for me, but and it's always has been. Uh, do you know of any YouTube channels that are similar to yours? Uh, there are a few YouTube channels that also review fruit, but none of them really kind of do it in the, the style that I do it. You know, I like to, you know, like, I'm an entertainer, you know, like, I'm not, uh, I don't grow things. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not a fruitarian, I'm not, like, a hippie, <laughs> I'm not, like, any of those things. So, like, for me, like, this is, uh, I think, what separates me from other people. Uh, there are YouTube videos where people review fruit a lot, and they're usually, like, fruitarians, or they're doing it for, um, you know, uh, as an educational thing for other people. So I think there's one called um, Growing Your Greens, and that one's pretty popular, but that one's about growing fruit. Uh, there's uh, Empty World which uh, is about like a couple that travels and reviews fruit, but for them it's, I don't know, it's, it's definitely got a different kind of vibe to it. So there's nothing really quite like mine, but there are other people out there that do review fruit. Um, you know, I, I honestly don't watch them because, you know, this is like, I do so many of these videos that uh, I, I prefer not to watch more. It, it takes up so much of my life to do the fruit videos, and I'm like always looking at fruit videos and thinking about fruit that, uh, you know, honestly, I don't watch other YouTube videos about it. Uh, let's see. Tony H1 asked, uh, do you plan on doing some new stuff in your channel? Yeah, I mean, I have the, the fruit videos. I also have the, the That's Not Coffee videos that I do. Uh, still making those, you know, it's just like, um, you know, the fruit videos take so much time that it's kind of difficult for me to put out um, other types of videos. Uh, but I still am working on those. Uh, they just go out on a slower pace, like every like month or two instead of every week. I also have um, the Weird World Explorer video videos, which I've done like two, three, three of them, I think. And those are, um, those are something that I do want to do more of, but they take a lot of time. A lot of time, because I, it's, you know, a lot of footage, it's a lot of information and voiceovers, and, like, I, I put, like, so much work into those, and at the end of the day, uh, nobody watches them. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's, a, like, a lot of work for something that I'm just kind of interested in. So, I, I think, like, going forward, I'll probably put more effort into those, and hopefully, like, that will... Uh, maybe like draw in new people to my channel and, and kind of like expand the content a little bit. Uh, how often do you travel? Uh, I travel probably twice a month on average uh, domestically for, for gigs. So I'll go to different states in the U.S., maybe Canada, and, and that's, that's usually it. Uh, internationally I travel, I'd say probably like once a year. Uh, and I do that during the winter time because during the winter I don't have a lot of work coming in. 
uh, here in New York. So uh, I might get like a gig or two in in a month, but uh, there's not a lot. So I travel. You know, it's very expensive to live in New York City. So what I do is I'll, I'll like sublet out my apartment and I'll go. I'll take the money that I get from that and buy a ticket, fly out and spend a month somewhere else because I'm not bringing in a whole lot of income so uh, going out and at that time makes the most sense for me and I don't have to pay New York City prices for like you know accommodations and, and food and stuff like that. It ends up being you know a, it's not like free you know after you work in like all that but it's it's very cheap uh, compared to being in New York. I used to go away for very extended periods of time. Uh, when I was going to Malaysia, I'd go to like, first time I went to Malaysia was three months, next was four, next was five, uh, and then, you know, I kind of like decided to tone it back a little bit. So now when I go away, uh, it'll probably be like about a month, you know, this past trip that I just took in Bolivia, video's coming soon, that was three weeks, and then before that I went to uh, Europe for one week. So about a, like a month uh, on average I'll, I'll go away. How tall are you? I'm five foot eleven. Do you think you will ever run out of weird, different fruits to try out? This is something that concerns me. Um, you know, I've I've tapped out like most of Southeast Asia. I mean, I've I've tried. There's still like a lot I haven't had there, but it's becoming much more difficult to to find stuff there. And that's why I went to South America for this past winter's trip. Uh, because, like, I, I needed new content. Like, uh, that's why I went there. I think, like, if I were not doing this series, if I was not getting Patreon support, uh, I wouldn't have gone to South America. I would have gone somewhere, uh, somewhere else. Um, but because now I have uh, a commitment to make these videos, which I, you know, I love doing, uh, I had to go somewhere where they, there was more fruit. So I went to South America, and I found um, something like 30-something fruits. So I'm good for, like, another year. So that winter trip that I take is, uh, is actually pretty important now. And now that I kind of like tapped out a lot in South America, I could go there again. There's other fruits that I haven't had, but I got a lot of them. Um, <laughs> I think like next time I go someplace, I probably have to go somewhere new. I have to go to like Australia or Africa or uh, you know, maybe like the Caribbean or something, um, India. Like, there's other places where I can get like a whole new... Um, world of fruit, <laughs> and it's, it's getting to that point. So uh, I do worry about running out, but I don't see it happening anytime soon. Uh, you know, like I live in New York City, where it's very easy to find like a lot of import shops where I can I can make videos like like this, um, like the ones I'm posting right now, or like comparing different fruits and you know commenting on stuff like that. So it's it's getting to the point where. Uh, I worry about it, but I don't think it's going to be an issue at least for like a few years. Do you plan on ceasing to make content for YouTube? No. Uh, I, I like doing this. This is fun. You know, like for me, like I used to play video games a lot, and um, you know, making videos has kind of replaced that. So it's kind of like a, it's a productive thing for me to do that kind of like satisfies that urge to like, um, to kind of like do something like that, like editing is kind of like satisfying that, that kind of, um, that kind of urge that I have. So, uh, I don't see myself stopping, like even if I do run out of fruit somehow, um, I'll probably start reviewing vegetables or something, I don't really want to, but yeah, I'd start reviewing something else, you know, so I, I plan on continuing these, uh, these videos as long as I can. Will you come to Brazil? If so, will you let any subscriber from down here help you out? Uh, you know, I wanted to go to Brazil actually this past trip, but uh, I didn't have the money for it. Brazil's very expensive to go to, and I wanted to go for an extended period of time, uh, and just like the hotels and the travel and everything was so high, I was just like, I don't have the money for this. So I would like to go there uh, in the future. There's a few things specifically in Brazil that are hard to get in other parts of South America uh, that I'd like to try. Um, so I, I would like to go. As for uh, hanging out with subscribers, um, I don't know, maybe. And depends. I think like if I if it's like a subscriber that has like uh, like a garden in their backyard where they're growing some stuff, uh, or you know something like that, then where it makes makes sense, then sure, uh, I think 
that's that's a possibility. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't want to end up you know in a bathtub with my kidneys removed either. So I think like meeting people online is kind of like a little kind of a little sketchy. But like if you know it's like a legit person with like you know a fruit conservatory that they own or something, then yeah, why the hell not? What do you do when you crave a fruit that you've eaten in another country uh, and you're not there? I get sad. <laughs> There's some things that I do really like and, you know, like when I'm editing a video, cause, which often is like a year later because I, I have a backlog of videos, uh, I'll like look at a fruit and I'll be like, oh man, I, I want that. So sometimes I, I crave things that I, that I can't have and... Um, you know, it's just kind of sad. You can't really do anything about it, and one of those things you can't really find any replacement for it. So, um, I don't do anything about it, but I start thinking, oh, maybe I'll go back to that country. Do you have a college degree? Yes, I have a major in English and a minor in psychology, and I am using it so, so well. What are your favorite countries and cities? I loved Laos. I really, really loved it there. It was really, really chill. Uh, people were really kind. Um, it was like a really like relaxing place, but there's a lot of interesting history there and culture. Uh, I really, really love Laos. Uh, I'm actually like working. I, I made one video about uh, my travels in Laos. Like not, it's one of those weird world videos, not fruit. Uh, and I'm working on a second one, so I'll be posting a little bit more about my trip to Laos. And that was years ago. That was like, three years ago, four years ago. It was a while ago, and uh, I just loved it there. My favorite um, city there was probably Sam Nua, which is like a, a capital city that no tourists go to, like hardly at all. I, I saw maybe like one other foreigner when I was there. It was like, but everyone there is like really nice, and there's like shops and stuff to do, and um, but still kind of like laid back. And had two like really really good markets there, like where I found sort all sorts of weird stuff. You know, I, I've liked all the places I've gone to for different reasons. Just going to Bolivia was amazing, because I've never been to any place like that before. Uh, in Bolivia, my favorite city was Riberalta. Again, it was a place that, like, no tourists went to. <laughs> it, was, it was just, like, in the middle of the rainforest, and just, like, people are just, like, happy, and everyone rides motorcycles there. There's, like, no, um, no cars for some reason. Uh, I love that. I kind of like going places that are just like away from it all, but still have stuff to do. You know, I don't, I'm not really like a lay on the beach in the middle of nowhere sort of guy. I like to like travel and like explore, but I also don't really like going to very touristy places. Uh, I like being like the only person there that is, uh, that's traveling. Um, so I guess it's kind of a selfish thing, but like that's, that's kind of like the places that I, that I gravitate to.